Hi, uh, I'm Daryl Caldwell, uh, recently titled The Expert, uh, and I'd just like to share a little bit about my journey with you. Um, I've worked at a company called CSC now for 10 years, uh, worked in the IT industry for 20 years, and uh, had a computer since my sixth birthday, uh, ZX81, just over 30 years ago. Um, I started off in software engineering. Um, still retain a uh, big personal interest in that, although in the world of paid work, uh, I sit in the IT services space. Um, I've worked uh, various business types uh, like in-house IT, outsourced IT um, for CSC and EDS before that, um, and also for, for channel partners of uh, vendors. Um, so I work uh, in CSC and GIS, primarily on the UK and I healthcare industry, uh, but I've worked on around 20 different accounts across various industries within CSC during my time. Uh, I've got primarily Microsoft history, and I've worked with Windows Server since NT35, so uh, back in the mid-90s when I started out, uh, and began virtualizing servers with VMware products uh, since ESX252 um, in around 2005. Uh, the UK and I healthcare account started in 2004 when CSC partnered with a number of software companies, including ISOF, to uh, host software as a service for UK hospitals under a government central IT programme. In 2005, we started to virtualise some of the uh, surrounding environments, such as training and testing, um, and in 2008, we partnered even closer with iSoft um, and started to provision more environments for them um, in a virtualized manner so as they could test and develop uh, in environments which more closely match production. More recently CSC acquired iSoft. Um, we now manage all of their environments uh, through development, data migration, testing, training, um, so several thousand servers. Uh, over the years the accounts look to virtualize more and more servers using VMware. We peaked at around 9,200 servers in the estate around across five onshore data centers and one offshore data center. They were mostly physical, but now we only operate two onshore data centers and the one development offshore data center. We try and virtualize where practical and move things to, to, to VMware. Um, we started off doing it for server consolidation, but since we've moved more to virtual, especially in the development space, we can be more agile with how we provision environments and, and servers, uh, and we can recover the space when they're not being used and, and reuse it. So we do a lot of provisioning, a piece of testing or development will take place, and then the, the environment gets destroyed and another one built on as it's needed. Um, as we've been doing that, over the years, we've used uh, traditional uh, server build tools such as Altris and Radia, uh, and more recently we're looking to move all of that to uh, Service Mesh to deploy the virtual machines using their vSphere provider, um, and then hand off to Puppet to do its uh, guest configuration. So that's uh, that's enough about me, uh, and I'll just try and explain a little bit about what the vExpert program is. Um, it started in 2009. It's not a published certification, it's a community award. So very similar in nature to Microsoft's MVP, the Most Valuable Person program, which was launched in 1993. Um, while most people are aware of MVPs, the experts still growing in recognition within the industry, but most people who actively use the VMware communities are aware of it. Um, I was pleased to be recognized with a VExpert status this year. Um, in for, so for 2014, for my contribution to the community during 2013. Uh, I have been an active member in the community before that. This was just the first time I got through to submitting an application um, for the VExpert um, programme. Over the next few slides, I'll try and break down my understanding of what the programme is, um, how I earned it, my personal journey, uh, what the benefits are, and then how you can become one yourself. So. So what is the vExpert program? Um, VMware describes it as uh, the vExpert title as going to individuals who have significantly contributed to the community of VMware users over the past year. Um, traditionally, every year, although now every quarter they've just changed it this, this year, people can apply to become a vExpert. 
um, you're, you don't automatically renew every year. Um, every year, including your first and subsequent years, you uh, submit a, a evidence dossier of what you've done in the community over the preceding 12 months, then it gets judged uh, and the awards issued. The uh, types of things to include in the material are information about blogs you write, any books you've written, if you're a VMUG leader, if you're a VMUG speaker, if you speak internally, uh, if you write any tools that are used in the community, if you just generally lead a community, set up a forum or, or anything like that, or just generally evangelizer and enthusiastic about VMware itself and the products they um, they provide. Their titles awarded to individual people, so not employers. Um, uh, it, it really is for, for people who are committed to sharing passionately about their knowledge in VMware or, uh, or just their general interest in it. Uh, VMware program, uh, the expert program, isn't a technical certification and it doesn't require you to be really technical, although a lot of people are. Uh, there's still plenty of scope to uh, to discuss and, um, and 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 take forward at being a V expert if you're not technical as well. So how did I become a V expert? I naturally have a, a bad memory. Um, over the years I've forgotten a lot more than I've remembered. Um, I've um, you know, people come to me with scripts that I've that they were trying to troubleshoot. Um, and it turns out that I've written them a few years ago and I have absolutely no idea on the contents. Um, I try to remedy this over the last few years by taking a lot of notes um, on paper, uh, notepad, Word, <coughs> Excel, that kind of thing. <coughs> but then you just have the logistical problem of how to store them. Uh, documents don't really easily, you know, it's hard to find what, what you're after if there's no structure. So. I started off putting them on like a blog uh, post just really to, to keep my you know uh, information current it, it, it's allowed me to review them and uh, and just really keep a structure to, to my notes uh, another part of um, of the reasoning I ended up becoming a V expert was I work a lot in between the development and the production space and in the development environment we, we have got a high churn of, of Wintel and, and VMware staff and um, so a big part of my role was trying to trying to coach and mentor them uh, with the new skills they needed um, to support the environment and look after the servers that, that they were they were dealing with them. The, the people went from having absolutely no VMware knowledge to uh, to having a little bit and just needed tailoring towards uh, you know how our deployment was configured uh, and what were good practices and what we want them to do. So to save a lot of repetition I created a series of videos and documents that they use and I'm very pleased to say that a lot of the engineers who, uh, who, who went through my mentoring went on to become VCPs and eventually they've left the company and, and gone on. I think one of them works for VMware themselves, uh, two of them have gone on to, to work for NetApp, um, IBM. So they've all gone on and, and done very well. And and I think, you know, I, I'd like to think that part of that is to do with some of the mentoring. And um, yeah, I was very, very proud of them. Um, so all of the collateral that I'd produced, whilst some of the internal videos and documents we couldn't, I can't, I can't share, uh, it's given me the idea that um, you know to try and store as much online as possible and try and contribute to the community because many of the times if you need to know something you can ask and somebody's there with an answer um, and it's great to give something back and, 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 and answer somebody's question if you can so I started writing a publishing my blogs instead of just being internally hosted at home uh, onto uh, the Google Blogger website it was fine, uh, but it was hard going, and uh, if you use it a lot, you end up needing to know quite a bit about HTML, um, and so you end up spending more time um, formatting than you do on the content. Uh, more recently, I've moved to WordPress, which if anyone is writing a blog, I'd heartily recommend as a very easy easy tool to to use and, and very integrated, and, uh, and you can really focus on the content rather than um, rather than the, the formatting and layout and all those other boring things. Um, 
I also do a lot, you know, as well as my, the notes that I take from work that I sanitize the, the the videos and stuff that I've created for the for the guys in um, uh, in our environment. Uh, I also try and learn myself. So uh, part of my education and studying, I've got home labs that I set up um, to try new things as part of the VMUGs that go to. You find out about new products that we don't necessarily use at work, but you can get as an evaluation. So you can try those at home. And uh, a lot of what I do in my home lab, well, probably everything actually, uh, I try and write up and, and place on the blog as well to be uh, to be used within the community. And for anyone who's interested, um, at the moment in the home lab, I'm looking at the new CSE handling tool uh, for bare metal provisioning of um, of servers um, and uh, and how that might be used to provision ESX uh, in a similar way that uh, that Razor and Puppet. Uh, are. So it's quite an interesting journey. It's very much different to what I do at at work, um, but it, it's kind of good to have the outlet of um, you know being able to store that somewhere and reference back to it myself and and for anyone else who might be interested. So really, just just I guess the the message is that, that I've just come about it because of necessity. You know, I, I don't have very good memory, so I just put stuff online. I had a bit of collateral lying around about training and stuff, which I put online my, my own learning. I've tried to just do all part of the community, and I think that's that's really how I ended up um, um, becoming a big expert. So what you get for going through the, the expert program? Well, professionally, it helps set you apart. Um, there's not that many V experts compared to, say, VCPs. Um, so if you've got two people, one of them is a VCP and one of them is a VCP and a V-Expert, it's a very easy differentiator. Even if somebody isn't aware of the V-Expert program, that ooh, they hold two different titles, one a certification, one a title, um, in VMware products. So it's, it's a very, it's a, it's a different um, way of differentiating yourself. But for the people who do understand what the V-Expert program is, I think it's a, it's a fantastic way of differentiating yourself because it's very hard sometimes to say as part of your certification history or what you're doing, you know, how well you work in a team, how well you communicate, um, and how much you do over and above your day-to-day -day job. And, and really a V-Expert, that's really um, recognition that, that you have done and it's been judged and on, on you know on the various merits um, and, and somebody's decided that that you do do all those things so it's it's a good easy check for somebody who does know what the v-expert program is to say oh yes they must be meet all the criteria that it takes to pass it so so that's really good you may think that that seems like um good if you're looking in the external job market but also csc appears to operate a bit like an internal marketplace as well and you're always going from contract to contract account to an account, um, and it's a good way of internally differentiating um, your, yourself from other people. Um, also, I, I've done some work at customer sites, um, not current CSC customers, but potential CSC customers, and it's very valuable for them to sort of see that we're we're committed to um, to, to VMware, and as employees, we we try and you know uh, move down the the roads and go over and above with with the VMware products. So I think it helps uh, get our customers understand that our engineers are passionate about VMware. Um, so I think it's um, I think it's benefited CSC and any potential employees that I work for in the future. I would guess in in the same way um, it would. So if you're lucky enough to attend VMware events like VMworld. Um, there are areas you can go, I believe, and socialise with other V experts. So you can put a, like a face to a name um, of, of community members. So that's quite nice. I've never been to a VMware event other than my local VMUG, so I wouldn't really know. But apparently, that's quite good. Um, one of the really useful things is you get a 365 day evaluation license for every uh, VMware product so that's really useful in your home lab for looking at stuff that you might not necessarily use like I don't use VMware Horizon and Mirage much in my work but I've been able to set them up at home and have a look and they're you know you sort of get a, a good look and feel for them um, and, and not have to worry that your license is expiring in 30 days and if you're anything like me you set something up at home and 
you do it one or two days and then you get sidetracked with something else and you come back and the evaluation's nearly expired. So to have the full year is very useful and you can, you can come to and go from product uh, projects easily uh, and not have to worry about licenses that expired and you're having to reinstall everything again. So other things, um, I've been asked to review some, like a pre-release VMware Press book which hasn't arrived yet, but that's quite interesting to see material as, it, as it's been written and, and try and provide feedback. Um, I believe you get access to VMworld video conference material that's online, and uh, but the, probably the, the biggest and best um, thing that I've got so far is a, is a sticker uh, to go on my laptop, so I'm very pleased with the sticker. But you don't really get a great deal. Uh, I wouldn't say that you become a V expert because of the things you get. They're just really fringe benefits to, to make your life easier. So if you if you want to, to progress down the road, you do it because you had an interest in the community and not really for the things you um, you uh, you can get from it. I suppose the other things, the, the non-tangible aspects about what you might get as well is just being part of the community is, is kind of nice. You know, we're all we're all human, we're all social and Interacting with people, discussing things, uh, having people feedback on your views is, uh, you know, it's, it's nice. So the community sort of side of it is, is one of those intangible benefits that, that you get from it. So if you are interested in becoming a V-Expert, uh, so if you like helping people, uh, sharing information, collaborating, um, learning, uh, part of the open source communities, uh, open source learning, community learning, all that kind of stuff, you'll just be a perfect fit um, because you're naturally suited to it. So just get involved, um, you know, answer people's questions, don't be a leech in the communities. Um, if, you, if you do something, publish it, write it as well as you can, uh, make little videos, um, just just do what you can. Keep, keep putting out content and even if you don't really know where to start, just start and do something and, and over time you'll um, you'll get better at it and, and same as anything and, uh, and after a while you'll, you'll be producing some great content and if you do that, like most weeks, you look back over the last month and you've kind of done a lot and you look back over a whole year and you go, wow, I've done a really lot and it's a, it's a nice sense of fulfillment when, when I came around to filling in the form to actually realise all the things I'd done through the year. So it's kind of nice just to go through the process, um, even if it's just to recognise what you've done. So try and write technical blog, maybe. That's easy. Um, try and do presentations. Maybe do it to your team, maybe to the VMA Champions programme, uh, maybe at your local VMA, maybe wherever, you know, school, college, you know, if you want to teach kids about VMA products or, or anything else you know, I think it's a very worthwhile thing. Um, also, if if you're discussing uh, with architects, maybe who who are aware a little bit about VMware, really try and go that extra mile in explaining to them how best to use uh, VMware technology. What are the benefits other than above server consolidation that they can really get from their environments? Other products maybe that that will help them, you know, make an average solution into a, a great solution. Because um, at the end of the day, you'll be you'll be hosting it, and so. Keep feeding back to them and, and try and influence people in, in their decision on, on how they configure and, and the products they use. Try and go through the certification processes. It's a very useful way of expanding your knowledge in, in other areas that, that you don't really use in your day-to-day -day job. Um, and those other areas that, that you're not so confident on because you don't use all the time, you can you can try in your own lab and, and try and you know write down your experiences uh, for others to learn as well because if we don't use it, chances are someone else doesn't use it. So the only way that you're going to expand your knowledge is to, to to look at those things and look at what other people have written and done and try and learn from that yourself. So I'd say probably the most valuable thing, if you don't have one already, is to set up a small home lab. So you can easily have any old computers lying around and about, put ESX on a USB bootable um, key, boot it, run it as ESX, fantastic. You can put nested ESX on there, virtual center, anything you want. It's very, very easy to set up a home lab on, on any old kit you've got. If you've got a little bit of money, obviously put some memory in things, maybe buy a NAS, find some fantastically cheap NASs around, the Synology NASs, you can present iSCSI, NFS, they're VAI, VAI capable, 
all very neat, very cheap, like, you know, £100, £150, say $200. Set it up, and the thing you should find out from um, from using it, you know, you can just share with other people, and, and you'll know for yourself as well. Once you've got some collateral, there's, there's three different paths uh, of going down. So there's an evangelist path. Um, by path, this is just when you fill in the form, which you can apply for a different area depending on where your skills are. So there's an evangelist path. So this is about people who, who actively talk about um, VMware products. So people who write books, the people who blog like myself, uh, people who build tools, people who speak in public, all those things, people who really evangelize Microsoft products. So if you follow that path, you know, just try and put, put you know, all the information that you can about what you do in that area. So there's a customer path. These are people who um, um, who internally champion um, VMware products. So this is really useful for if you not a partner, but you're just a customer of VMware, and for whatever reason you can't really talk in the in the public communities about what you do, but you you do an awful lot internally in your company to extol the virtues of it and try and encourage people to use it uh, to, to use VMware products. Um, and then there's the third path, which, which I went down, which is the um, VMware Partner Network path. Now, we're obviously a, a, a large partner of VMware and sell a lot of VMware products. And certainly an awful lot of what we do, we can't share in, in public, but we can share internally. And So in the teams that I work and the people I have influence over and things, I, I really try and try and do that. So you can, they're not set paths. So even though I followed the partner path, partner network path um, actually a lot of my collateral was about what I do in the evangelist path so it's kind of no hard and fast rules you just really <coughs> really do what you can and um, I guess the only final message is start creating content share it internally share it online if you can um, and next year um, submit an application and you may be you may be lucky and um, I, I must have been lucky okay well that's about all I have to say, so thank you very much for listening, and uh, we'll catch you again soon. Bye.